Hi there, Des Asante here from the Tech Muse Academy and welcome to what I like to call a custom mix lesson. Uh, as you know, uh, part of the Tech Muse Academy is the flagship course mixlessons.com. Fantastic response we've gotten on that over the last few years. This is something a little different. This is uh, an opportunity for you to, to not only get a mix lesson, but a customized one uh, using your own session material. So this was a submission by a Tech Muse community member by the name of Marty Christopher. And this is, I believe, an original conversation composition called Stuck in the Fall. Um, he had sent the tracks along with his rough mix and uh, the rough mix was very respectable but there was definitely things I could hear uh, that could be improved to bring the tracks to their full glory and, and potential. So um, I will walk you through the thought processes and the steps that I took to get the presentation to the level that I managed to get it to. Uh, but before we do that, let's first have a listen to the original rough mix uh, by Marty Christopher. So I'm hearing the mix is fairly two-dimensional, which, which leaves room for improvement. I really want that chorus to bang a little harder. There's some tuning issues with the vocals. Kind of muddy in the low mids, a lot of competition down there. The panorama seems a little off balanced in my personal opinion, although that's more of an artistic uh, decision. Some weird low end reverb thing going on there with uh, the harmony vocals. You can hear that weird rumbly when those backup vocals are in there. Okay, so overall, a listenable mix, but definitely areas where we could improve. Um, now, if we have a look at what I've got on the screen here, let's just listen to a little bit of, um, of the final results. Okay, so, and of course, this is what we were starting with. So from there, to here. 
So uh, a noticeable, a noticeable um, uh, change. So let's take a look at what we've done here. Um, well, for starters, <clears throat> on my first pass through the session, I basically just did a couple of minor production type things and got some general level balances with the faders. Um, the first thing I did uh, as far as a, a production element is concerned is I replaced the kick drum. Um, this was the original kick. Uh, no, hang on one second. Oh, you know what? I actually, I actually removed the original. Did I remove the original kick? No, this was the original kick. <laughs> I did this a few days ago, so I don't really remember. Hang on. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we had that kick. And what I did is I, uh, generated a MIDI file from uh, from the original kick uh, in Cubase. Uh, if you open up the, the the track in the sample editor, you can have uh, you can analyze where the hit points are and just pop a MIDI file out. So I did that and I sent it to Superior Drummer and chose a kick drum there and blended it in with the original. I wanted a bit more attack on it, um, a bit more point. The the original kick um, before it was edited had a little it was a little too round for my taste, so it didn't really punch through the mix. So I uh, I replaced it. Well, I didn't replace it. I doubled it with this uh, sample kick play the two together okay now I also did uh, was not satisfied with the um, the snare drum so I did a bounce uh, a, a very similar thing I took this sample here And again, same same technique that came from Superior Drummer generated a MIDI a MIDI track from uh, the original uh, snare, which, by the way, is this sound. Okay, which I'm still using, but I'm using it blended together. So here's what it looks or what it sounds like together. Okay. So that was uh, sort of a production type thing. <clears throat> the only other production type thing that I did that uh, is different than, than strict mixing is I tuned the, the vocals to tighten up those harmonies a little bit. Uh, basically quantized the pitches. Um, in, in I'll show you the way it looks in Cubase. If I take this track here, in fact, this is the, yes, I did, I did do this one. If I go into Vary Audio, you can see, after it's analyzed the audio, you can see these let me get to the right tool here, these um, pitches here. So I didn't actually change and, and like auto-tune in the stereotypical sense to give you that sort of T-Pain sound. I didn't want that at all. I still wanted the original performance. I just wanted to quantize the pitch centers. So so the, the, the up and down, vibrato in the voice, all the natural curves and slides from one note to the other remain intact. It's just that the landing points um, in the center have been quantized closer to the pitch. Um, and then and the result is a nice tight harmony and if we listen to the vocals together you'll hear what I'm talking about like I'm 50 feet tall and the world can seem so infinitely small okay so they sound quite nice and tight now <clears throat> they were a little bit loose for my taste and it was causing things to pop out of the of the mix in an unpleasant way whenever there was a note that wasn't quite bang on where it should have been so uh, i took the liberty i suppose creative license to go ahead and do that um, the one the one vocal i did not tune was lead vocal number two which is sort of a double that happens in the chorus and a few other places and it sounds like this I feel like I'm 50 feet tall. And the world can seem so infinitely small. Okay, so there's some still some subtle fluctuations. Sometimes I feel like I'm not here at all. But when you juxtapose that against the lead vocal, just the two of those together. Times I feel like I'm 50 feet tall. It gives it a more authentic natural sound because one of them is left au naturel and to, to give a little bit of push and pull, it actually makes the double sound a little thicker uh, that way. And the world can seem so infinitely small. So I was pretty pleased with how that turned out. Uh, not bad at all. 
Um, so those were the production type things that I did. Um, from there, I got my general fader balance in place. Now let's go through these tracks um, one at a time here and have a look at exactly what's going on. I'm gonna bring up the mixer <clears throat> and we'll start over here. If we can. Okay at the all vocals bus so if we look at the all vocals bus incidentally there is some routing of obviously going on so i had <clears throat> um uh, background vocals all routed to a stereo fader called background vocals which then leads to the all vocals fader and then i did the same with the two lead vocal tracks um the main and the double which lead to a lead vocals fader and then that of course leads to the all vocals fader which goes to the stereo output okay so fairly typical routing there so on the all vocals bus all i have going on is is an LA 2A, um, which is giving a little bit of compression. Sometimes I feel like I'm not here at all. Okay, just about a dB or so uh, of compression with the LA 2A, which has fixed um, attack and release uh, values. So really, it's just how much gain reduction do you want? Um, I just happen to like the LA 2A. This is the Universal Audio uh, emulation. Um, Waves has a nice one as well. Uh, I happen to like it on vocals. I think it uh, has a real natural um, kind of transparent sound to it, which personally I like. So from there, if we move along to the lead vocals um, bus, so those two tracks, the tuned and the untuned one, land on this particular fader. Let's have a look at what we got going on here. Uh, I'm gonna solo just the lead vocals. I've been around, I've probably been to your town. So uh, if we start first with the effects, uh, the sends, I've got a little bit of a, um, uh, a delay, um, sort of a kind of a tap delay. It's, uh, let's see if I can open that up. Where, where is she? I gotta go to the other fader. Here, let me, let me grab it and, and pull it up so you can see it. Uh... Okay, so that is my, um, is the delay by the way i'm this is a in terms of effects this is a pretty simple mix uh i'm only using three send effects uh i've got my uh, uh h delay from waves um which is just a, a regular delay it happens to have a little bit of a sort of an analogy kind of saturation to it which i like uh not quite so clean and pristine uh in fact i'll show you uh, that in just a second as well um, and then i've got uh my um uad plate reverb, the EMT-140, which is my favorite plate reverb. And then I've got uh, the Steinberg Reverence, uh, which is a convolution reverb. So it uses impulse responses. And I'm actually using a uh, impulse response from the Bricasti reverb unit um, because I can't afford to buy one. <laughs> uh, so um, it's a Bricasti, just a, a small studio room uh, reverb. So I'm using that as my short reverb, the plate as my longer reverb, and then the uh, H delay. So those are the effects we're working with. Um, um, so if we look back at the lead vocals, let me close these out for a second so we can see what's going on. I've got a little bit of that delay going on. Searching under every personality. So I'm, I'm going to bypass them all first. I've been around. So there's the dry vocal. I've probably been to your town. Add in the delay. Searching under every personality. For a harmony of human sound. And that when it, when the vocals is soloed, it sounds pretty dramatic. But in the mix, if I bring the the, the tunes back in. I've been around, There's without. Without it, the vocal sounds kind of really dry and upfront and, and, and whatnot. It doesn't have any bigness or grandiosity uh, to it. So let's have a listen. I'll bring that in. So it just bigs it up a little bit. Now let's have a listen with the, uh, and I'll bring in the um, the room reverb. I've been it's without. Been to your town. We'll bring it in. Okay, so pretty subtle, but it just sort of places it in the space a little bit better, I found. And then if we bring in the uh, plate reverb, um, let's have a listen. So this is first without it. I've been 
bring it in. Okay, so that is what's going on as far as the effect sends on the uh, on the all vo or sorry the lead vocals bus. Um, the other thing I got going on here is a few inserts on that uh, on that channel as well. Um, the first one in the chain is the CLA um, vocals plugin from uh, Waves, the Chris Lord Algae Signature Series, which um, if you follow me for a while, you'll know I'm a big fan of. And um, what I oftentimes do with these plugins is what I've done here, which is just choose the start me up preset uh, dry and then just move along and basically I treat that as though that's the way the vocal was given to me it's just sort of like a, a corrective type thing let's uh, let's check out what it does I'm gonna I'm gonna bypass it first and uh, we'll bring it in under every personality for a harmony of human sound okay well, let me bring it in I've been around I've probably been to your town. So you'll notice the there's six controls on this plugin. The three on the right, I'm not using at all. They're not engaged. Uh, I've got a little bit of compression going on here, uh, a little bit of of a treble boost, a top end boost going on, and uh, and then the sub the sub bass to give a little girth to it, which is actually pulled down quite a bit, um, so as not to be too dramatic. So once again. Uh, let's hear that. I've been around with the plugin. I've probably been to your town without the plugin. Searching under every personality for a harmony of human sound. Okay, so that again, that's just the start me up preset dry. I didn't uh, tweak with this plugin. I just I just happen to like what it does most of the time. So from there, I added a deesser to tame some of the sibilance. So let's have a listen without the deesser. I've been around, I've probably been to your town, searching under every personality for a harmony of human sound. Bring it in. I've been around, I've probably been to your town, searching under every personality for a harmony of human sound. So it's just taming that sibilance a tiny bit. I don't want the singer to sound like uh, that, like he has a lisp, because that's what will happen if you go too crazy with it. Um, but just pulling in some of that sibilance a little bit. I still kept the vocal pretty bright though, uh, you'll probably notice, um, because I, I like the way it sat in the mix. Next, I have a bit of compression after the de -esser, and I like to do that after I've controlled and removed what I don't want to then uh, add the compressor to sort of pull up the, the smaller details. And let's have a look at what it's doing. I've been around. I've probably been to your town. Searching under every personality. It's just kissing it. You're getting a dB maybe at most of gain reduction there. Um, just kissing it and keeping the, the peaks under control um, before moving on to the EQ, which I'll show you in a moment. But let's hear it without the compressor. I've been around. I've probably been to your town. Searching under every personality for a harmony of human sound. With? I've been around. I've probably been to your town, searching under every personality for a harmony of human sound. Okay, so that's what's going on with the compressor. Again, it's just kissing it. The next thing I have is the um, Manly Massive Passive EQ from UAD. Um, again, you, if you don't have the, this EQ, you know, you use whatever EQ you have. It's the it's the principle that I think is is important. And what I'm doing is uh, a bit of a a boost. Uh, to the um, to the to the upper end of the frequency spectrum to give a bit of presence. Let's hear what it's doing. This is without the EQ. I've been around. I've probably been to your town. Bring it in. Searching under every personality for a harmony of human sound. Out again. But I'm still alone. Still searching for a home. Bring it in. My optimism only atrophies, though my cynicism's fully blown. 
Okay, so it's not night and day, it's a subtle thing, but it just let, makes the vocal stand out a little bit more uh, in the mix. And then the last thing I have in the insert path here on the lead vocal bus is uh, a, a cool little magic plugin from Waves as well called the Vocal Rider. Um, this basically automates fader riding uh, to take some, some of the effort out of it. So let's have a look at what it's doing. You'll see the fader, you'll see visu visually the adjustments that are being made. Let's have a look. I've been around So it's turning up the vocal there I've probably been to your town Pulling it down a little Searching under every personality For a harmony of human sound Now if I bypass that plugin and just hear the vocal without the, uh, uh, the, the fader automation I've been around I've probably been to your town Searching under every personality for a harmony of human sound. So let's listen to that with the with the mix. I've been around. Here that first line almost gets buried a little bit there. Let's hear it again. I've been around. I've been to your town. So now let's bring the the vocal writer in. I've been around. You hear that around? It comes up, floats up nicely and, and becomes audible. Let's hear that again. All right, so that's what's going on on the vocal. Last but not least, I have a little bit of EQ uh, taking place here. So let me bypass the EQ and the, and the high pass filter for a second and hear that again. I've been See how the vocal starts to sound dark? It's a little too girthy. It doesn't pop from the mix uh, like I was hoping it to do. Let's hear that again. I've been around. I've probably been to your town. So first thing I do is add a high pass filter, low cut. This is set at uh, 180 hertz. And let's hear what that does. I've been around. I've probably been to your town. Without it. Bring it in. So it cleans up that bottom end and makes the vocal actually, even though I'm removing information, it makes the vocal pop a little bit more um, without that low end information. And now let's bring in the uh, the EQ. You'll see I have a little dip here at 650, uh, well 648 is where my mouse landed, um, uh, uh, going down by 4 dB um, with a fairly wide Q. And then I've got a, a little air boost at 10K of 4 dB, a shelf uh, uh, at 10K. And let's hear what that's doing. So this is without the EQ. Bring it in. Okay, and that is the lead vocal uh, bus. Uh, if we move along, the actual two individual vocal tracks that are being sent to that bus, there is nothing on them. You can see here as I flip b between the two. Um, you'll notice lead vocal two, the fader has been pulled down a little bit, but that's about it, uh, just to blend them together, okay? Um, moving along from there, we've got the backup vocal tracks the backup vocal bus that is uh, and it has that same cla vocal plugin with the same start me up uh backup vocal preset again i just put that on and uh and moved along so let's have a listen to it and we're gonna find some still searching for a home okay that's with the plugin still searching for a home without for a home. Bring it in. So uh, it, it's obviously adding a level difference too. So that's kind of deceiving as to, as to what it's doing. But I did need the extra volume. So I let, I let it stand. Um, but that's the plugin that's on the backup vocals. And then I've also got it sent to the room reverb. Let's bypass the sends for a sec. My optimism only atrophies. Okay, let's hear that again. Optimism only atrophies. Bring in the room reverb. My optimism only atrophies. Bring in the plate reverb. My optimism only atrophies. 
and that is the backup vocals. I've also got a low cut at 100 hertz, um, and again, if I take that away, and I've got a little bit of a, a high frequency roll off, uh, just up at the top end, the air air spectrum, like you don't really hear a lot up there, but it was just it just m made it rounder and warmer and settle a little bit nicer. So let's bypass that and hear that again. Sometimes I feel like I'm 50 feet tall. Bring in the high pass. And the world can seem so infinitely small. Bring in the EQ. Been waiting for the universe to call. Okay, so subtle, subtle, but um, but seemed to get uh, what I needed done. And then if we look at, and that's it for the backup vocals. Uh, if we look at the individual tracks, the harmony tracks, um, there is nothing on those channels. I did all the processing on the bus. The only thing you will realize is that the low harmony is panned to the center. The high harmony, as it's labeled, is panned a, a, a little uh off to the left, 46, uh, and then the other one is pan hard right, the higher harmony. If we hear that again. Let's solo all the vocals. I feel like I'm 50 feet tall. That's with the lead and, and the, the backup. And the world can seem so infinitely small. Okay, so that's what we got going on as far as the vocals are concerned. Um, let me see if I can fix something here. Aha! There we go. My bank button wasn't functioning properly. Um, so from there we move on to the drums. So if we look at the all drums bus, uh, on the all drums bus, I have a, let's solo those and have a listen. I have a uh, compressor, 12 to one ratio, uh, sort of mid attack, slightly longer release, uh, grabbing about up to about five or so dB of, uh, of gain reduction. So if I bypass that, this is without it. With it, oh. let's go to where there's some drums. <laughs> okay, so that's what the compressor is doing. Um, I did experiment with this uh, Devil Lock plugin because what I wanted was a little bit of saturation on the drums. This one turned out to not give me what I needed. Uh, I just bypassed it in case I changed my mind, and I did instead use the little radiator from uh, Sound Toys. Those are both Sound Toys plugins. Uh, they had a cool promotion going on um, not long ago where they would uh, you would pay whatever you want for the plugin, and the proceeds went to a, a charity. So I thought that's pretty admirable, and I and I bought these two. Um, so let's hear what it's doing. This is without it. And with it. I love that. Let's hear that in the mix. Without. With. So there is a little bit of a level increase there, um, but you can hear it's pretty obvious, uh, at least it is to me, that, that rough around the edges saturation that we're getting, uh, that analog is, uh, analogness, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, um, that we're getting from the little radiator. Uh, and then I also have um, a, uh, a limiter on the chain, not doing anything, everything is set to zero. Just to protect the output, I think I was running into a problem at one point, but let's let's see. Yeah, it's not even being, it's not even engaging. So truthfully, that plugin doesn't need to be there. Um, but it's there, so I'll leave it for the time being. So that's what's going on on the all drums bus. If we look at individual drums, this is the kick bus. Now, if you remember, the kick drum was made up of the original kick plus the sample replaced one as well. So those two tracks um, are being sent to one fader, which is this fader we're looking at here right now. So again, I've got my um, handy dandy CLA plugin just at the start me up kick drum setting. And again, let's hear what that's doing. I'm going to solo the kick for a minute. So that's with everything engaged. Let's bypass that CLA. 
bring it in. So you see that's, uh, that's done a good job of uh, thinning out the muddy part down in the low, low mid range there, that woofy part, um, a, a, accentuating the attack a little bit nicer, um, making it a little pointier. Let's hear that in the mix. This is without the plug -in. Kick gets a little buried. Let's hear it with the plug in. So it has a little more attack now, a little more presence down there as well. Uh, after that, I've run it through a uh, compressor again. Deep ratio, getting about 3 dB of gain reduction. Um, same attack and release curves we saw in the previous uh, example. Mid-range attack, slightly longer release, really heavy ratio. Let's, uh, let's have a listen. Okay, let's hear it without the compressor. Bring it in. Okay, so after the compressor, we've got the uh, tr a transient designer, and a transient designer is uh, I wanted to accentuate that attack even more, the point on the kick, so that I, so that it could be felt without having to be louder. That was the general idea. I wanted that I wanted that that kick drum to really punctuate the the rhythm the way uh, I believe it was intended, but without having to turn it up louder to achieve that. So let's have a listen. Let's I'm going to solo the drums and we'll listen to this with and without. This is without the transient designer. Remember we're listening to the kick drum here. Let's bring it in. Okay, so that's uh, what's going on there. And the last last thing in the chain is the uh, the Waves um, R bass, the Renaissance bass plugin. Let's check out what it's doing. I'm going to bypass it first. This time I'm going to solo just the kick. So there's the kick, feeling kind of thin and wimpy. So I bring in the R bass set at 80 hertz, and, and that fattens it up nicely. Let's hear that with the. Without, with, okay, so that's a pretty noticeable difference, pretty dramatic. So that is the kick drum, that's what's going on there. Oh, there's also a, a high pass filter, a low cut filter set at 100 hertz, um, and that's to, that's to get out of the way of the bass guitar. I wanted the bass to have the sub lows and the, and the kick drum to act more as a punctuation uh, uh, type device. Um, so if we take that away, let's, let's listen to the, uh, the whole mix. And I'll take away that high pass filter. Let's go somewhere where there's actually kick drum. Okay, bring in the high pass. Okay, so subtle, but uh, but uh, necessary in my opinion. Um, so that is that as far as the kick goes. Now, the individual two kick uh, uh, channels that were sent to that group have nothing on them. Um, then we've got our snare drum. Snare drums being sent to the room reverb. Um, so if we solo the snare, where are you? There you are. That's without the reverb. And that's with the reverb. Okay, so that's one thing that's happening. There's also a high pass filter at 50 hertz, just getting rid of anything on down below that's not relevant to the snare. Uh, then we've got the CLA uh, snare preset again. Uh, again, let's hear that without. See that snare sounds woody and and woolly. Um, and and this that's why I love these plugins. I mean, we could sit there with our EQ and compressors and and create this 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 shape to the tone. This these plugins uh, just do it for you. So I, I'm, I'm all about conserving my workflow efforts. So, so this is without the plugin. Let's go back to that. There we go. And then with, it's 
we can hear them snares rattle a bit more we got rid of some of that unnecessary low end and, and low mid uh, stuff and then we moved right along to our compressor and uh, compressor set eight to one we're getting two two three db of gain reduction without with and again that's just keeping things consistent, not doing a whole lot in the way of tone shaping or anything like that. Uh, however, one thing that we are doing in the way of tone shaping is this UAD um, Little Labs emulation of the Voice of God. The Voice of God, VOG as it's commonly referred, is uh, is a cool little plugin. It's one of my sort of secret weapon plugins, and and I like to use it when I want to get some girth back into a signal. Sometimes a vocals, in this case a snare drum, um, without actually reaching for the EQ because sometimes you're boosting certain frequencies in the EQ and it doesn't have quite the effect you're going for. Let's have a listen to what this is doing. I'm going to bypass it. Let me bring it in. Okay, so you hear it's added that girth and throatiness to the snare which makes it seem not so wimpy. Let's hear that in the mix. get to a spot where there's snare drum. Now let me bypass that. You hear how the snare just got wimpy all of a sudden. It didn't seem like it punched anymore. Gah, gah, gah. Let's hear it again. This is without the, the VOG. Let me bring it in. Now there's some punch to that snare okay so that is what's going on on the snare bus along with a little high pass filter again just to get you won't even hear really what it's doing but it's just getting rid of any information down below that's not necessary okay and then on the individual snare tracks there is nothing on them at all okay so it's, uh, just I I controlled the, the fader levels to blend them together the way I, I wanted um, but there's nothing going on and if we listen to the snare by itself if I take away, um, okay, so here's just the sampled snare, and here's the other one blended in, okay? So that is the snare drum. Next we have the toms, uh, and if I look at the individual toms, same, same deal. There's nothing going on on those individual tracks. They're all being sent to a bus and processed together, okay? Um, the only thing on the individual tracks is balance, fader balancing and then panning from left to right, okay? So once again, good old faithful CLA toms, start me up preset. Again, I didn't even tweak nothing. I just pick it and move on um, because nine times out of 10, it, 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 it's an improvement. So let's have a listen. Uh, we're gonna have to find some toms here somewhere. Let me... Pull the mixer out of the way. Hang on. Um, get rid of the mix. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Get rid of the mixer and let's open up the drums here and find some toms. Let me get rid of you too. Okay, so there's some toms in this neighborhood. Let's set up a little loop here. There's a good spot right there. Looks about right. Okay. So this is with the CLA plugin. This is without it. Big difference. With. Okay. So that's what that's doing. And then from there we go directly to our compressor, which is 12 to 1 ratio. Only a dB or two of gain reduction, nothing too heavy going on there, just to control the peaks a little. If I bypass it, you'll notice what it's also doing is it's bringing up some of the low level signal. Um, so you get a bit more of that reverb and whatnot. Incidentally, the verb that you hear was on the track. I didn't send this to anything. This was the way the track this, the, the, was given to me. So I did want to bring that up a little bit. So have a listen. This is without the compressor. And with. 
You hear a bit more of that space in the room in there too. And that's what the compressor is doing. Last but not least, we've got the uh, transient designer once again that we used on the kick drum. Um, we've applied that. Let me bypass that. So that had a bit too much ringing of the toms and a little bit too much of that after the attack. So what I did is I dialed up the attack and down on the sustain. So let's hear it again, bypassed. Hear how big and unruly that is. Bring the plug-in in. Much more under control. Okay, that is the toms. Um, so let me get rid of that little loop there and see what else we got. So after the toms, and once again, there's nothing on the individual toms. They're just panned a little bit from left to right. Uh, from there, we got the hi-hats. Okay, so if we look at what's going on on the hi-hats, uh, actually nothing except for some pretty dramatic high pass or low cuts, uh, almost uh, at 1.7K. Uh, I'm rolling all of that off, so we're just left with some frequency content in the higher end. I just wanted it to be a bright sort of punctuation. Uh, let me bypass that so you can hear it. This is what it sounded like without it. So way too much down there. It's serving more than its purpose. So I just cut that out uh, pretty, pretty aggressively. Okay, so that's the hi-hats. And if we look at the individual, because there was a couple of different hi-hat parts, um, there's nothing on those. So they're all being treated as one track right there uh, on the, that bus fader. Okay, from there, we move along to the ride symbol. Um, let's see, do we got some ride symbol somewhere? Where do we got ride? Find a spot where there is, there's some ride. So same thing here, just some some low cut. If I get rid of that, it's too much. Bring it back in, thins it out a little bit so it doesn't get in the way, not so unruly, okay? From there, we had a cymbal track which didn't get touched. I wonder if I can find some sound on that. Where is that track? There it is, there. So there's just some crashes now and again, uh, cymbal crashes. And that track is, I didn't even touch it, uh, nothing at all. In fact, I could probably go a little high cut, uh, a little uh, low cut, sorry, on there, but uh, I didn't, so we'll just leave it as it is. So that is more or less the drum kit. From there, we move along to the bass guitar. Bass guitar, same thing, CLA, love these plugins. Just pick the start me up preset and off you go. So let's solo the bass and uh, hear it. This is without. Bring it in. That attack and that punchiness gets really uh, uh, accentuated. Um, I like the high frequency content that's been brought out with the, uh, the finger noises and whatnot, the fretting sounds. From there, we have the little radiator again, adding some heat. So let me bypass that. Bring it in. If we hear that in the mix, this is without it. Bring it in. Okay, so I, I love that. Again, these are subtle, subtle, fairly subtle effects, but they make a difference to the way the instrument sits in the mix and how much presence it has. Um, that's kind of what I'm listening for. These are the kinds of things that are hard to explain um, because they sort of come with, you know, once you once you begin to shift your focus from listening to a sound to listening to the to paying attention to the feel and how the feel is changed by the plugin. So let's let's check that out again. If I if I bring that plugin in and out, uh, it's out right now. Bring it in. Again, it just made the bass take up a little bit more room and become a little bit more aggressive sounding without actually turning it up or anything like that. So it's more of a feel change than a real so sonic change, although obviously sounds are changing. Um, last but not least in the chain there on the bass is a bit of compression. Let's check it out. Let me bypass it.
Very similar effect here. This compressor is set 20 to 1 ratio, like super, super steep, getting lots of, of gain reduction, 7, 7, 8, 9 dB of gain reduction. Um, and, and again, it's bringing, it's, it's controlling the peaks so that the bass isn't getting much louder as far as peaks go, but it's bringing up all of the other stuff that was quieter and squishing it up closer. So it gives the, it gives the impression of girth uh, to, the, to the sound. So let, again, let's hear it without the, uh, the, uh, the compressor. Now let me bring it in. Solo. Without. Bring it in. Okay, uh, so that is what's going on on the bass guitar. From there, we have the all guitars bus, and we're almost at the end of this uh, of this of this mixer. Um, so the all guitars, if we look at that, so I've got a compressor. Let's go back to that chorus. So four to one ratio. 3 to 5 dB, uh, around about 3 or so dB of gain reduction. Without it. Bring it back in. Okay, so that's what's going on there, along with just uh, some, some low cut again as well at... Uh, about 70, 80 hertz, and then um, uh, a little bit of that plate reverb. So let's hear that with and without. This is with the plate reverb. Without. With. Let's hear that in context with the mix. Without. Okay, so that's what's going on on the uh, all guitars bus. Next we have um, four or five individual guitars. Uh, let's look at those real quick. This one called Dream Guitar is this track. I've got a, uh, a bit of EQ going on, some high pass filtering, a low cut at uh, almost 300 hertz. If I take that away, you hear that that gets... It's too woolly and fat down there, so I thin that out a little. And then I've got this this uh, uh, seven eight dB cut at uh, at one k one point two k. If I bypass that, it gets a little certain points in that in that in that pattern get a little uh, hard on the ear. So hear that again. Bring it in. And let's hear that in the mix. Without the EQ, it's, it's taken up too much room. Hear it again. Bring in the EQ. Pulls it in a little. And then the compressor's in there, just uh, doing a little of its thing. Let's see. Pretty heavy, 7 dB of gain reduction, 4 to 1 ratio. Let's hear it with and without. Take it away. Bring it back. So again, there's a lot of detail and texture in that track, and so I wanted to use the compressor to really squash it, bring it back up again, so that we're bringing a lot of that si quieter detail back up closer to the surface, but yet maintaining the control of the track. So that was the theory there. Uh, on the next guitar, this clean guitar, and let's have a listen to it. Not much going on here, just a high pass. Get rid of some of that unwanted stuff down below and then a bit of reverb if I take that away bring it in in the mix without the reverb 
Daniele Okay, and that's panned a little bit off to the left. Um, if we look at, the, that's all that's going on there. If we look at the uh, guitar called Edgy Pop Guitar, um, same thing, a bit of the high pass. You're noticing a trend here, high pass on every track that doesn't require information down there. That's set to 140 hertz, 137. And then I'm rolling off some of the top end as well. Let's have a listen to this track. So I wanted this track to be a little bit further away sounding, partly because the the, the track was recorded with that delay and verb on it, um, so I don't have any control over it, so you go with it, right? So what I've done is I've, I've removed some of the top end. Let's listen without the EQ. See, the trouble is that high frequency content destroys the illusion of distance because if the track was that far away, those high frequencies wouldn't have reached your ear. So uh, let, me, let me bring it in and while it's playing. Okay, instantly makes the track sound further away. So that's what's going on there. And if we hear that in the mix. So you got that guitar on the left that we were just looking at a little, quite a bit uh, closer. Because the parts are very similar, I figured let's treat the other one differently. We pushed, we pushed them off to the right a little bit uh, and back into the mix a little bit further. So adding some color and texture, but not competing with that main funk guitar part there, okay? Uh, and then last but not least, oh no, there's actually two more. We've got this channel here. Is there guitar on it? Let's see. Where is our guitars? Oh, here it comes. So just some high pass and some reverb. If I take that reverb away, bring it back. And that's panned off to the right as well um, with the uh, edgy pop guitar that we were just looking at. But this one is closer. The edgy pop is further back. Let's hear those two together. So that's the one guitar there. Okay, and if we hear all those guitars together, let's go to the chorus section. Because now we're getting our last guitar, which is the distorted guitar, this one here. Okay, so I, I sent this to a bit of that delay and uh, to thicken it up a little uh, and some of that room reverb as well um, and then some high pass filtering as well. I basically treated this guitar as adding aggression to the bass. Listen to this with the bass together. Bring in all the guitars. Yeah, yeah, and if we hear that whole thing together. So you hear that distorted guitar just kind of adds a, a, a gritty accent to the bass line, in my opinion. That's how I sort of treated it. Um, so that's pretty much the mix. The only other things we didn't look at is um, the plugins. Those three plugins that are all I used as far as send effects, the room reverb, the plate reverb, and the delay, all had a low uh, frequency roll off. 200 hertz there. Um, where's the other guy? Uh, same thing there and same thing on that one. So that's all that happened uh, in this session. That is pretty much it. Now, last but not least, before we wrap up this uh, this tutorial, is let's have a look at a little bit of subtle automation that I did. Um, I don't believe there was any guitar automation. Um, there was no drum automation. No, nope, but I did uh, do a little bit on the vocals. Um, so if we look at that, Let's select all here. So this is our all vocals bus. So you'll notice in the um, the first chorus here, I did a little bit of a dip. Let me zoom in a little so that becomes a little more obvious. So there's a little bit of a dip here. If we listen to that coming into it. So the vocal in the... In the Season's 
chorus here. Okay, so there's less going on in this section of the verse, so I, I, I didn't want the vocal to be too outside, so I just dropped it down a tiny bit um, during this section, and then back up again for the chorus, and up in here, same thing, the band breaks out there, the drums drop away, the vocal comes down a little bit, so it still sounds settled in the mix with the, with the intensity, and then it gradually fades back up, it's fading up a little here. I wanted to accentuate that lyric um, about somewhere in the springtime of my youth lies a cold, inescapable truth. Um, so I did a little bit of automation there just to bring that out a little bit. Uh, and then on the lead, vo that's on the all vocals bus, by the way. So the, the harmonies and main vocals. And on the lead vocal, you'll notice there is a dip down here. Winter is done and summer same same thing there's the the verse has less going on so i didn't want the vocal to sound out of place and then when you get to this next section it comes back up again and if we look you watch the fader here you'll see that exactly what's happening So I just brought that back up a little bit. And then there is a, a dip down here at the end where I get significantly softer. And let's have a, a, a look at that. Okay, I bring the vocal down here so that when we get to this part, Those guitars and bass still sound big. Okay, one other thing I forgot to point out, silly me, is the processing that happened on the stereo bus. So let's have a look at that. Uh, we have got um, the uh, a multiband compressor going on and I like I like this this is a technique I picked up from an engineer by the name of Charles Dye um, uh, he, he uses this and he was the first person to expose me to the technique but basically it's kind of like a dynamic EQ where I'm using the various bands with just a hint of compression to sort of just pull in uh, and feather the edges um, let's have a look at what it's doing Winter is done. So it's aiming the highs a little bit a little bit on the low end some stuff in the mids there when the guitars come in, you'll see. And so I've set the thresholds ever so subtly just to make the line dance a little and subtly um, uh, control the EQ curve. Uh, let's hear it without. Okay, next in the chain we have the Isotope Ozone, which is sort of a mastering style plugin. Um, it's got uh, seven different modules in it, uh, of which I'm just using a few of them. Um, there is a little bit of EQ going on there. Um, the harmonic excitation, a little bit of, of compression, dynamics control, a little bit of stereo imaging enhancement, and then the maximizer to get some more volume out of it. So let's bypass that and have a listen. In. Without and with. Okay, and then uh, a second to last here, we have uh, an EQ that's giving. Um, this is actually a preset in the ma Manly Massive Passive that is the Fletcher Munson curve, which is sort of the frequency response of the human ear. Um, so, uh, so let's have a listen to what it's doing. I'm going to bypass it first. So 
it's got a sort of cleaning up effect. It gets rid of some of the muddiness in the low mids uh, and kind of cleans up the uh, the the tonal spaces, I guess, uh, if for lack of a better way of putting it. And then last but not least, I have a L2 maximizer from Waves, which is a limiter, um, protecting the output. In fact, I normally bring that down just a little below zero there, um, and, uh, and, and giving a little extra volume. So let's check it out. Just barely, you'll notice the attenuation is just barely kicking in. I'm not trying to super squash the whole, the, the life out of everything, just to control things a wee bit. So let's hear that with and without. Without. And with. And that, as they say, is that. So that is basically uh, the whole mix right there um, uh, of Stuck in the Fall uh, by Marty Christopher. Uh, I want to thank Marty for uh, for taking me up on the offer to do a custom mix tutorial. Once again, if you are interested in, in having this done for you and uh, your music, uh, you will get, of course, a final mix. You'll get a mix from me, but you'll also get the custom mix lesson as you've just seen here, then um, then head on over to techmusicacademy.com and uh, take me up on that particular offer. So thanks again, Marty, for the excellent music. And I will wrap this up by listening to Stuck in the Fall in its entirety. Uh, just before we do though, let's, let's go back and, and just to gain perspective again on what we started with. This was Marty's rough mix. Okay, and then what we ended with. So hopefully you're pleased with that, my friend, and, um, and we will wrap this video up by listening to the tune in its entirety, and I will talk to you another time. Sorry.